So today I'll be covering the class two restoration and how to get the marginal ridge height correct. Most of you will notice that when you do marginal ridges that they end up too high. So today we're gonna to work out how you solve this problem. So class two restoration is uh, usually too high because of a several factors. Number one is that people use a matrix that's too high. So unfortunately in the old days of Toflamize and sequelins that they were only one height and so everything used to end up that height. And we got used to kind of building it high and then cutting it down with amalgam and carving it back. Now the thing with composite resin is much more difficult to carve back than it is to carve amalgam. So what the second thing that happens, and we'll go over that in a moment with this video, is that people fill the cavity too much. So in a standard class two cavity like is being shown here, we get the matrix in, we put the, the clamps on, the wedge in, all of these things, and even if we do get it right, so usually it's too high because we're using the wrong size matrix, but even if we do get it right, what people tend to do is they tend to fill the cavity right to the top. And so you can see here, I'm doing a demonstration of how not to do this and why it's a problem. So you can see, obviously I'm not doing bonding agent, it's a plastic tooth, it's only for demonstration. So you can see that I'm injecting the composite and then as I pack it into the cavity here, I'm just packing it up against the top of the matrix. Now, when you just fill composite to the top of the matrix, like I've demonstrated here, it will be massively too high because the top of this matrix is not in line with the adjacent tooth. And so then you cure it and now you have a lot of grinding back to do. And this type of grinding back is very tedious and it's, it's more time consuming than getting things right in the first place. So you can see here we're curing and then when we take this matrix band out, look at how high this composite resin is. So you can see here that it, okay, this looks like a normal filling that someone might do. They're built it up, they're going to grind it back. But once the matrix comes out, it will be about two millimeters too high. So come off with the ring, and then matrix is out, and then voila, we have a marginal ridge that's high. Now you can either leave it like that and then it will break, or you chip it, or we trim it back. And so here, uh, now we have a lot of grinding to do. And the problem with grinding is that for a burr to have enough rotational speed that the surface can cut properly, it needs to be fat. So if you have a very tiny burr, it's not that, that it can be rotating fast, but the surface speed is so low that it's gonna take forever. So, so let's look at, that's now how you do it wrong. Now let's look at how you do it right. Number one, make sure the matrix is the correct height. So we actually hold the matrix down uh, and generally we want to try and have it level with the marginal ridge next door. Now remember that marginal ridges don't go straight across from buccal cusp to lingual cusp, they actually go down and then up. So they're much lower than the two adjacent cusps. So we don't want to fill right across from one hill to the other hill, there is a valley in the middle. So with a, a matrix like these paladent matrices, they've got the little tab that folds over and that tab should be sitting on the marginal ridge next door and that tells you that you've got it done to the correct height. We get our wedge in, we get our uh, ring on to make sure the contact is tight. And then usually when I'm doing a class two, I'll put some uh, flowable in the base area. It helps adapt without getting bubbles. It's much easier to get adaptation to the base of the cavity with flowable than it is with paste resin. Uh, and then once I've done that, I'm gonna place another little drop of flowable which I leave uncured. And what this does is as you inject the paste, the flowable kind of runs everywhere and it makes sure there's no, uh, it makes sure there's no increment bubbles or you know, little, particularly bubbles at the sharp edges where the marginal, uh, where the margins meet the matrix. So now that we've got a little bit of flowable in there, we're placing a little bit of uh, paste resin, so slightly less than we think, and now we're using our micro brush to push this against the matrix. So we place it in there and then uh, we're pushing it against the matrix. And you see, as we push it against the matrix, it kind of bulges up and we're pushing down almost against the floor of the tooth. And that forces the resin to run up the matrix and create a resin wall, okay? And that resin wall will be round at the top because as you squeeze down, it will come up and have a, like a thick roll at the top. 
So then uh, once we've done that, we're going to now sweep from the middle of the matrix to the lingual and then from the middle to the buccal. So what we're doing is we're now looking at the adjacent marginal ridge. So we're looking at the tooth next door and we're adjusting the height of this by trimming the composite to the height of the adjacent marginal ridge. Then we're doing the other side. And so now we have built a wall of composite that's the correct height. So very close to the correct height. Uh, and that more or less forms a composite matrix. So we've turned our sectional matrix into a composite matrix. And at that point, we can remove the ring and we can remove the matrix. Generally, don't remove the wedge yet, because if you remove the wedge, it'll probably bleed. You need the compression of the wedge on the tissues uh, to stop things bleeding. Now, if it did bleed, well, you can just wash the tooth off, reapply primer and bond, and continue on. So now we've built that wall of composite. So we've traded our sectional matrix to a wall of composite. Now we can just turn it into a class one cavity. So we can now uh, build the rest of the cavity using all of our normal guidelines like I did in one of my earlier videos. And so now you can see that we've created this wall of composite that's like a composite matrix. Uh, and it's got the right curve and it finishes at the same height as the adjacent marginal ridge, which is much lower than the cusps. So three, three things to keep in mind. Number one, have your matrix the right height. Number two, fill the wall and then trim it back with a probe to the correct height. And number three, remember that a marginal ridge doesn't go straight from cusp tip to cusp tip. It's actually much lower. It forms a valley between the two cusp tips. So if you follow those things, you will find that your uh, class two composites are requiring a lot less grinding after you place them.